Hello and welcome to SVC Sports Weekly, your weekly 10-minute audio program hosted by me, Mike Nozick, and head baseball coach David Gage, giving you the rundown on everything Mountaineer sports. And we had a little trial run last week, didn't go so well, so this is the first official show. And like I said, we're under the gun, 10 minutes. So Dave, let's get right to it. Men's soccer, big conference win over Daniel Webster on Saturday, 2-0. Pierre Massena with two goals in the first half. And that's a big, big game for that program. Yeah, it is. You know, last week we talked about how they had five losses by one goal. And it was big for them to get underway in conference play. And they go to Daniel Webster, who's perennial, a very good team in the New England Collegiate Conference, and got a 2-0 victory on the road. Actually, the first time that men's soccer has won at Daniel Webster since, and I remember this, 2006. only reason I remember it is because I was on that team. Ryan Heron with a lofted goal from about 35 yards out in overtime to take the 3-2 win. And unfortunately, that was one of our only two wins that season. But, hey, <laughs> uh, you know, relive the glory days when you can. So We've suffered a lot of losses there at Daniel Webster in the, in the past few years. A, a conference semifinal loss, a conference final loss. So, you know, for a team that's struggling in the men's soccer program and to get a win, and to get even their record at 1-1 one one in conference play is very good. First win for head coach Tim Panderod at Nashua. And as you mentioned, you know, that big conference win. Uh, early going in the conference schedule, but for them to be able to capture that right off the bat, going into the rest of their schedule, you know, this week they're taking on Mitchell, uh, Skidmore College tomorrow night, Tuesday night at 7 p.m. So they're on the right path. As we mentioned last week, they have the tools. They're starting to piece them together, putting them in the right order, the right formation. And I think, uh, you know, that team has definitely got their sights set back on the conference championship after a slow start. Women's volleyball. Yeah, last week, you know, was up two nothing against Keene State at home, and you know, after a 25-10 first set win, I think a lot of fans even scattered out of the gym. And uh, Keene State, you know, give credit where it's due. Keene State battled back and won the next, the last three sets, and uh, upset us on our home on our home court. Yeah, you know, again, congratulations to them. Uh, they were very thrilled with the upset win, battling back from five match points in that final set so I think it was kind of a wake-up game for our ladies see that they can't just walk out and expect to win that they have to focus and they have to play hard throughout the match and uh, you know they responded well yesterday try match at Norwich won both games or both matches rather three sets to none uh, those wins over Norwich and Maine Maritime so again responding very well uh, coming off a hard loss and be able to put two more in the win column going into this week, which is a big week for them as they start conference play. Yeah, three conference games this week. Uh, tomorrow night they're home against Becker. Thursday they travel to Regis. And Saturday they host Daniel Webster College back home at 2 p.m. So again, going into conference play, I think they are you know, got all the motors clicking there. Everything's in order. And if they could come out of this week 3-0 in conference, then that is the right step forward to the number one seed, which I think is their ultimate goal, ending the season going into the conference postseason. Switching gears a little bit, going to go to the cross country side of things. Um, the teams, men's and women's, were both at the Vermont State Championships held by Linden State College up in the north part of the state. And they ran very well, very sloppy course. A um, couple pictures that Coach Stuber sent me, one of them was online. Very rainy, rained all morning, sloppy course. She said it was a tight course, sharp corners, and the guys battled. Uh, you know, very good competition at that meet. They had nationally ranked Middlebury College, who was the fourth on the women's side, um, I want to say 11th on the men's side. They had Division II St. Mike's, a uh, very good Linden State team. So they, they did well. And again, freshman Joshua Caesar leading the way again for the Mountaineers. Time of 32.07, good enough for 27th overall. And on the women's side, Haley Omasta, 31st overall with a 25.05.7. 15 seconds slower than her usual 24.50s, but... <laughs> yeah, much much of the same, you know, with Josh up front for the men and Haley up front for the women. But it's good because they're both freshmen. And, you know, I think we've talked a lot is the cross-country program is going in the right direction, led by freshmen. And, you know, it's a, it's a very good positive for us. And they get a much-needed week off this week, uh, not participating in any meets. So that gives the runners a chance to rest, um, reorganize, 
refocus, maybe get some homework done if they're slacking on that kind of thing. And then in two weeks, they go to the Western New England Golden Bears Invitational down at Western New England University in Springfield, Massachusetts. And I think that is their last meet until the NECC championships. So that'll be a good test to see where they are going into the conference championship and kind of work out any last minute kinks and solidify their top five. Yeah, it's good, you know, get the week off and then go run again and like you said, prepare for those NECC championships. Yeah, all right, we're gonna go over to women's soccer now. One in one week last week, they knocked off Morrisville State at home to nothing and then fell at Elms College to nothing. So that loss at Elms brings them to 0-2 in the conference. Is there any reason that this team should be worried? I don't think so. You know, they're, they're very talented, they're young, and, you know, they faced Leslie University in their first game, who is perennial. They're the best team in the NECC every single year. And Elms went to the NCAAs last year, you know, and I don't think there's any reason to worry now. You know, big week this week. They they go to or they host Newberry on Saturday back home. I think that's a you know I don't want to say it's a must win game, but it's a game they need to need to get a positive result out of. It would definitely be nice if they could grab a win there, grab a couple conference points. As you mentioned, that's their only match this week coming on Saturday, so they have you know five days to again reorganize, regroup, rest up a little bit, figure out what happened in that Elms game that they need to prevent from happening come Saturday. Um, quick note, back on Thursday in their match against Morrisville State, junior rookie Caitlin Forant with her conference leading 11th goal of the season continues to get on the end of good balls and finish which is definitely something that you know this team is really getting used to. Seeing her produce and step up in situations where they need a goal and be able to put the ball in the back of the net. Yeah, you know, big big goal by her, and I think the big thing, touching back on Elms a little bit, is the thing that stood out to me was Elms scored a minute 31 into the game, and talking to Michael, the team just didn't come out uh, with a ton of energy, and but in the second half they played even, and I think that that goes to speak of halftime adjustments that they make, and which is why I believe after a week off they will be just fine next week. A couple more players to note here quickly before we leave. Women's volleyball freshman Sarah Graham had a match high 10 kills yesterday against Norwich. Only two errors and 15 attempts, good enough for a 533 hitting percentage. That's not too shabby for a freshman. And then also men's soccer, Ruben Olivares scored his fourth goal of the season in the loss against SUNY Cobleskill, an overtime loss back on Wednesday evening. So he's continuing to do well. Senior Chris Hansen with his first of the year. And Christopher Dunham. Freshman keeper notching his first shutout victory in the win against Daniel Webster on Saturday. Seven big saves in that game to keep Daniel Webster off the board. Before we leave, Dave, anything else you want to add? I know your team is headed to Herkimer Community College on Sunday to wrap up kind of its fall season there. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be fun to see where we are. You know, that's the best thing about the fall is we get to go out and let our guys play and see where we are for the spring and make the adjustments that we'll need to make. So we're excited for that and, you know, big week for our fall sports as they continue in conference play and hopefully they can bring some wins home and and head down towards uh, the conference championships. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for sticking with us here on SVC Sports Weekly. We hope that you tune in next week. Tell all your friends about it. Check out svcathletics.com for more information. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. That's Southern Vermont College Athletics. And follow us on the Twitter at the svcathletics.com. Oh, that's not right. I'm not a big Twitter guy. At the SVC Athletics. Yeah, there we go. Sorry about that, Twitter fans. So signing off, Mike Nozick alongside Dave Gage for SVC Sports Weekly. Go Mountaineers. <laughs>